Welcome to Music Biz and Law Insights, a podcast hosted by Justin M. Jacobson, an attorney at the Jacobson Firm. Hello. As a disclaimer, nothing here is intended as legal advice, as everything is for educational purposes only. This episode will briefly look at some issues related to bands, groups, and musical duos. There has been a rise in artist collectives like the Wu-Tang Clan, in DJ and producer duos like LMFAO, and traditional bands and music groups like rock bands, boy bands, and girl bands. There are many issues that arise when more than one person work on music together. While the all-for-one mentality with each person receiving an equal share of all the profit is great in theory, when the money begins to roll in, attitudes may change. While it's not the easiest conversation to have, it is best to first enter into a written agreement that addresses and agrees upon many important points to ensure that all the musicians agree and understand what they're entitled to and what they actually own. When creating this document, each musician should have their own attorney or independent counsel to advise and represent them and protect their individual interests. However, if this is impossible, then the musicians can have one attorney act as a scribe after all the musicians sign a written waiver and draft the contract on behalf of all the artists. In this writing, the parties can agree on how the profits are split, which can be split in whatever formula that the artists agree to. This document can also listen how decisions related to the group and band member matters are handled. The document may state that each artist gets one vote with a majority approving most group matters, or it can be altered in the contract to give one person additional votes, like, say, the lead singer. The document might require a larger majority or even a unanimous vote for certain more important matters, such as removing a member from the group or hiring or firing a professional, such as hiring a manager, bringing in an attorney, an agent, or business manager or accountant. The document might also include tie-breaking provisions where a third party can act to break a tie between the group members, such as the band's manager, accountant, or lawyer. Also, the document might agree and discuss rules on how you spend the group funds. Also, it might determine how each individual member's financial contributions to the group are handled. So if one person is paying for studio time or buying equipment, are they reimbursed first and then the rest is split? Or are they not reimbursed at all? Now, these are all matters that can be agreed upon in a signed writing. It is important that each member of a group or band is aware and agree on what is considered group income and what isn't. This is especially important if not all members are engaged in all of the group's musical activities. So if one member is the sole producer or one person is the only songwriter, then that individual might be the only one entitled to a publishing share and songwriter credit and the associated monies that go with that. However, the group can potentially agree in writing that a songwriter producer of a track will solely earn all the revenues for that song, or they can agree that any royalties earned from any of the group's work count as group income, and all of them are entitled to a percentage. So these are really important things that the band must agree to and could be included in an agreement. An agreement between the members might also state who actually owns both the tangible and intangible assets of the group during the group's existence as well as when it dissolves. So tangible assets might be instruments, recording, sound, or lighting equipment, a band website, social media accounts, any group merchandise that already exists, t-shirts, hats, mugs, or really any physical music inventory, any CDs, vinyl records, or anything else that's already been created using the band's funds. A very important issue is who owns the rights to the band or group name. In some cases, the member who came up with the name might be the sole owner of it, or it might be agreed in writing that each member equally owns the band name, or the agreement could say that one member could solely own the name and the other members might receive money for the licensing and use of the name for merchandise and non-music products. Another important issue can be whether a member can utilize the group name after it dissolves or how a former member is publicly billed if they leave. Like, can you be called Justin Formley of the All-Star Band or can you no longer use the name when you're no longer involved? Another important point is whether or not only a few members of the group 
but not all of them are performing together if they can utilize the original band name. So this might be applicable if, say, you have a seven-member seven group and only four of the members are able to perform together and they all want to perform under the original name. So say you have four members of the Wu-Tang and they all want to perform. Are they allowed to perform as the Wu-Tang Clan or do they have to perform as each individual member like Red Man, Method Man, Ghostface Killer? So these are all matters that can be discussed and agreed upon in writing. The parties can also agree on whether or not a leaving member is entitled to any future group income. So they might agree that the former member is only entitled to any funds for projects that they were involved in and that they receive no additional money for anything that comes after. They might also say that the leaving member's interest is reduced, so they just earn less on any future works. Some agreements might include a full buyout option where a lump sum, which might be payable in installments, is paid to the leaving musician to release any rights that they might have to any future group income. It's also important that if a new member joins the group, that this new musician signs and agrees to any existing agreements to ensure they know what they're entitled to. Also, when a new artist joins, They might sign an agreement that outlines whether or not they receive a cut of any income for any songs created prior to them joining, or the agreement might just say they only earn money on new works that are created when they're in the group. So if history teaches us anything, bands and groups will disagree and break up, and the best way to deal with this is to have written agreements that list all the procedures before it's too late. As always, the best advice is to hire a professional whose experience in the field can advise you. Thanks for tuning in. Follow me on Twitter, Justin J E S Q. Check jacobsonfirm.com for more information and useful articles. This is attorney advertising. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. And as always, everything is for educational purposes only. <laughs>